Jingle jingle friends, welcome to Holidays at Harmony Hills Home and Garden. I'm Jenny and we are making faux candy today for my Candyland themed Christmas tree. Come with me and let's figure out how to make these faux treats for the Candyland theme. So today we're going to be using Model Magic Clay. This is a lightweight foam air dry type clay. It's very squishy. Even after it hardens, it's still a little bit soft. Not very squishy, but it doesn't, it, like if you dropped it, it won't crack or anything. I have with me today two and a half packages of it and I'm just gonna use what I have. Uh, I don't plan to buy any more of this. Uh, when I purchased this at Michael's, it's $4.99, not on sale. So if you have coupon to get a cheaper price, that'd be good. I did find this at Target for $3.99 a package for the same size package so that's a better deal but on the other hand I don't really have coupons for Target usually so they work out to about the same depending on what kind of coupon you're using. I found a tub of this at Michael's that would work out to be eight of these packages so instead of paying $40 for eight of these packages at $5 each you could get that big tub for $25 so that would be a good deal if you plan on doing a lot of crafts with this Model Magic clay. So I'm going to insert some footage here of some marshmallow treats that I've already made so let's take a look at those. These were super simple to make. First, condition the clay so that it is nice and elastic and easy to work with. And then once you've got that done, just roll it into a log about the diameter of a jumbo marshmallow. Not jumbo, but a regular sized marshmallow. So you can see I've got my log here and I'm just smoothing it out on the sides and making sure that the ends are kind of uh, not too thinned out. And then I'm using the edge of a plastic ruler here as a cutting implement. You could use a putty knife, you could use uh, really anything to cut the clay. And then what you do is you just roll it into a ball and then start to roll it into a log with smooth sides like a marshmallow has. And once you have the sides done, then just shape the ends to make them flat. And it is as simple as that, and they look so realistic. I have fooled many people with these marshmallows. They look so real. These will air dry in about 24 hours. Now after this, I mixed some caulk, craft paint, and glossy Mod Podge to make some faux candy coatings. And then I put faux sprinkles on top. So those were super cute and super fun and easy, easy to make. So I'm gonna be making some more marshmallow themed treats, but they're not gonna be just plain marshmallows like those were. I'm gonna be making things like this photo. Don't those look cute? I thought we could make some of those too. So I'm gonna start out by, actually, I'm just gonna make some marshmallow twists. These were just little twists in different colors, so I'm gonna see if I can get some of those going. Now, I only have white Model Magic. They do sell it in other colors, but I haven't purchased it in other colors. So I'm going to be using some craft acrylic paints to color my Model Magic before I make these treats. Now, I am not a crafting channel. I've been watching a lot of crafting channels on YouTube lately to get ideas for all these crafts. And I guess there is a style of crafting YouTubers out there that is pretty consistent and they don't talk so much. I'm a talker. So if you're here as a crafter, not as a gardener and you haven't met me yet, welcome. Thank you for joining me. Normally I'm out in the garden rambling on about my thoughts out there. Today I'm rambling on about my thoughts in here. Here we are. Okay, so I'm gonna see if I can come up with, um, let's see, I have yellow, blue, green, and pink that I'm gonna be working with to try to color my Model Magic. Uh, so I want four balls of roughly the same size, and I actually have my kitchen scale in here. So I'm gonna use my kitchen scale to make sure that I'm starting with balls of the same size. 50 grams, 59 grams. Let's take some, some of that off of there. 48 grams, 50 grams, perfect. Okay, now I have four balls of 50 grams each and I'm going to be working the color into that. I'm gonna put the extras back in my plastic so that it doesn't dry out on me, but actually this doesn't air dry super, super, super quick. So I think I'll be fine 
working on these four. Now, when you work with this foam clay, you wanna, what they call, condition it. As far as I can tell, that just means warming it up and moving it around and getting it stretchy. As you can see, when I took it out of the package, when you pull on it, it just breaks. But the more you work it, the more you squeeze it, knead it, roll it, play with it, um, it gets a little bit more elastic. And somebody I saw said that it has to do with the polymers that are in it to make it a little bit more, to activate the chemical compounds that are in it to make them more elastic or something. I don't know. I don't know the science behind it. I have two kids in my family who are chemical engineers. Maybe they know more about this type of clay than I do and could answer me. Beth, are you watching? Do you know anything about this foam clay and how kneading it does or doesn't affect the chemical bonds of the polymers in it? Let me know. Or if you're a viewer and you know, please put it in the comments down below. Anyway, so that's what I have learned from watching YouTube is that it gets stretchy by conditioning it and it has to do with the chemical compounds. Okay, so to put color in this, if you put too much liquid in here, it's gonna affect the consistency of it. So I'm just gonna try to have lightly colored clay balls here. I'm gonna just put some pink in the middle. I really don't know how much to do compared to how much um, clay I have here. So I'm just going to start with what looks to me to be about a half a tablespoon and, and I'm just going to fold that in here and knead it until it's incorporated in most of my um, clay turns pink. Now I anticipate I'll be having uh, pink hands here in a minute so I'll have to go wash my hands to get that color off. I'm just going to see what I can do. You know what? Let me take my ring off. That'd be smart. Okay. meeting here. I may end up putting a little bit more color in. Right now it's kind of a pink marbly situation going on. And I think I have plenty of clay here that I can and probably should add some more color. So I've put quite a bit more in here. Now I have probably a full teaspoon in there. Coming right along, it is making my hands pink. I will have to go wash my hands, but small price to pay for having cute colored pink marshmallowy foam. All right, I think that's really good. Now, I ended up putting in this 50 gram ball, I ended up putting about, I would guess, about one and a half table, uh, teaspoons, one and a half teaspoons of liquid pink uh, acrylic craft paint. And it has gone a very soft, soft, soft pink, but here's the white to compare it. So you can see that it did change to a beautiful pink color. So I'm gonna set that aside. And actually the pink on my hands is now pretty dried if it's still there. So I'm gonna go ahead and work with the blue. And if it gets a little pink in my blue, it's fine with me, it'll turn it a little bit lavender, so. You know, you can use your color theory and figure out which colors you don't mind mixing up together. And I'm also trying to go light to dark so that I end up, um, you know, if you did a dark color and then you tried to mix a light color and you still had it on your hands, then that would be more problematic. So I'll be back with you in just a little bit after I condition this clay and get it colored. All right, so I've got my four colors mixed, and so here is my white. I do have a whole package of white plus this little bit of white left to work with. So as you can see in the inspiration photo, I think I think that was a skewer intended to resemble sushi. Does that look like a sushi, sushi platter to you, a shish kebab of sushi? Does that make sense? Or maybe they were just fun decorative candies made out of marshmallow. I don't know, but they were marshmallow. They did have some edible glitter on them here and there. So maybe they were intended to, I don't know. 
I don't know. But anyway, so they just had fun shapes with combinations of colors put together and then they were stuck on a skewer. Now I'm not gonna do a two foot long skewer like that. Um, I'm just gonna work with this clay until I run out of it. And then what I have is what I have and then I'll see if I wanna like uh, put them out on a platter or if I wanna turn them into ornaments or, or what. I don't know yet how that's gonna go. Um, I think over the course of this season, I bought, I wanna say five or six of these packages. So at that point I probably I definitely should have gone and gotten the big tub, but when I first looked for the big tub, they didn't have them in stock. So I only found them in stock like the other day. So anyway, so what are we gonna do here? Before I go on, I do wanna mention the colors I used here. This is Apple Barrel Pink Parfait. This is Craft Smart Turquoise, Craft Smart Bright Yellow, and Craft Smart Grass Green. What I'm going for is a rope that is consistent circumference all the way down the length of it. And, you know, these are skills they taught us in elementary school and some of us probably kept those skills in place better than others, right? Doesn't have to be perfect, it's just pretend candy. It's like I have, oh, well, okay, so when you stick them together, they stick, so. I guess that's what that's gonna be. And now we know. Don't stick them together until you're ready to. All right, now I have a long roll that's got five different tubes on it. I'm gonna to try to just roll them enough that they stick together without a hole in the center. Now I'm gonna twist it like that. And if your twist wants to untwist, just press down the end onto your work surface. And that is the candy that I saw at the checkout counter. So I'm gonna just cut it up into pieces just like they were at the checkout counter. Keep them separated, otherwise they will stick to each other. All right, I think that's super cute. What do you guys think? Just a little marshmallow treat. So that's simple enough. I'm gonna set them on a roll of wax paper so that they can dry. I have some little scraps here. I'm not sure what I'll do with those quite yet, but I'm just gonna set them aside. Maybe I'll find a use for them. Next, I'm gonna do what I th hope will turn out to be a heart shape, and I may or may not be successful with it. Let's start with that. And then I want to wrap it in pink. I don't happen to have a specialty rolling pin, so I'm just going to use what I have laying around, which is what I encourage you to do as well. Now my idea with this was to wrap that white cylinder with pink and then shape it into a heart afterwards. So I'm cutting straight edges on that pink wrapping, wrapping it around that white tube using my clay blade to make smooth edges. Now smooth this out. And now my thought is I could make the top of the heart by indenting the top of the cylinder. And uh, I thought that I would have the pink and the white all together in that indentation there. And then I would just need to make the V shape at the bottom by squeezing the opposite side of the cylinder. Now this turned out to be a little bit more difficult than I had in my head. And I'm totally sure there are better ways to make a heart-shaped cane, but this was my first time doing it and I was basically just experimenting. So I was gonna check on it, cut the end off, see what it looks like on the inside there. It looks kinda like a heart, sure. So I figured I was, you know, this was good enough for my purposes. This is just for my own personal Christmas decorations. So this is my attempt at a heart-shaped cane. 
And so I'll let it dry and then later I'll cut it into chunks that are uh, hopefully heart shaped. Okay, I have no idea if that one's gonna work out or not, but we're gonna just move on. Now this one is really just, I'm experimenting and playing around. I had the idea to maybe make some layers and then swirl them together. So I, I know there are better ways to do this. In fact, if I were to do it again, I'd do it differently. But I made some long skinny ropes and then I flattened them out. And um, so then I figured I would stack them up and um, this one got too thin, so I had to refigure it. So that worked out pretty well. Um, so I'm just stacking up these long, thin strips of different colors. I think if I were to do this again, I would have made larger rectangles rather than just one thin strip. And then I would have been able to make a log and slice the log later. But as it is, I'm just trying to experiment here. So I was thinking about how I'm going to get these edges straight and I kind of muffed that up. It's, it's not really great, so don't do it this way, but this is what I did. So then I thought, well, let's spur, spin these into uh, pinwheels and make little rounds of pinwheel-shaped um, different marshmallow treats. So, you know, the edges aren't straight, and so, yeah, next time I would make a large rectangle of all three colors and then layer those and then roll it and then I would be able to slice logs off of the roll. But this is what I got. So I made three of these pinwheels. Later, after they dried, I did slice them with a smooth edge and they turned out pretty good. Next up, I wanted to make some whimsical picks that I could put into the tree. Uh, I decided to go with yellow and white this time. So I'm just taking some yellow and white ropes and I'm twisting them together and then decorating them with little polka dots of pink clay. This is modeled after some whimsical pics that I saw online at various stores and in various YouTube videos. It's just really a, an amalgamation of a bunch of ideas that I saw all over the internet this season as I was researching how to make a Candyland theme for my Christmas. So this Model Magic Clay is really, really easy to work with and they just stick together really well. Uh, while they're wet. So I'm just making um, little polka dots of pink on the uh, intersection of the yellow and white ropes. And, uh, and then I'll just um, continue that. I've got three rows of pink polka dots and they um, kind of swirl around. And then I just set it aside and turn it into a curly Q shape. And that's it. Super simple. For this one, I want to make a flower cane, basically a log that when you cut it on the uh, cross section, it ends up looking like little flowers. So I'm taking one center yellow rope and then wrapping it up, uh, not wrapping it, but laying it beside six different uh, pink canes, all roughly the same length. And so um, in the end, I'll have a log that is uh, shaped like a flower. This one was really easy to do. This is something that kids could certainly do. Super simple. Next up, I had some blue and green clay, uh, and I decided, well, let's see if I can make some ribbon candy. So I made three different lengths of uh, clay, two green and one blue. I put the blue in the center and the green on the outside. I'm using popsicle sticks to sort of straighten out the sides so that it's not all wobbly when the uh, strips join together side by side. I'm sure there are other ways to do this that real people who, artists who work with clay on a more regular basis would have a better method, but this worked pretty well for me, just using those popsicle sticks. And then I set them beside each other, side by side. And then, you know, they stick together as soon as they touch, so that was easy, nothing, 
nothing special to adhere them together. Just trying to keep them all the same depth so that it's, you know, smooth and one piece. So green, blue, green. Evening off the sides here. All right, now I'm just gonna simply pull this to stretch it. I could use a rolling pin to spread it out, but I find that um, this clay responds really well to just stretching gently, especially if it's been well conditioned like this clay has been. And so now I'm just going to form some ribbon candy by folding it back and forth and back and forth in the accordion style and then just trimming it off. I'll do this again and again. I think I ended up with three or four of these candies. Now at this point I had some leftover green and blue ropes and uh, so I wanted to, I don't know, play around with another shape. So I made some logs and then I, oh, that one got too thin, so I just fixed that. Made two logs, a green one and a blue one, and then I just twisted them together, side by side. I got a little wonky little unevenly twisted but that's somewhat easy to fix and then I thought well let's see if I can make like a, a rope lollipop so I curled it up and then I thought well if I want more than one of these I better cut it here so I made one small one and then I used the rest of the rope to make a second small one so I don't know what these are intended to be used for in the future I'm just kind of playing around with the clay at this point so just playing with shapes and textures and colors and thinking of fanciful candy ideas. Okay, time for some more whimsy. Let's make another one of these curly picks. This time I'm using up the rest of my blue clay. There's a nice big, long, thick log of it. And then I'm gonna wrap it with some smaller white ropes and then turn it into a twirly, curly pick for the Christmas tree. This was really easy and it turned out super cute and it's something that definitely kids can do as well. Another fun kids craft. And I was having so much fun with that I thought well why not do another one. So I'm combining my green, yellow, and pink clay here to make another curly swirly pick for the Christmas tree. Now for this one I thought, why not make a little curly branch coming off of it? So I made another rope, 
similar to the larger one, and then I uh, am planning to combine them together. Now I am going to have to glue these together so that they can last in the long term, but for now I'm just going to let them dry into this shape. Now I've gotten down to the bottom of my clay. I've used up almost all of the clay that I made in the fun colors today. So I'm just gonna take some of these leftover pieces and twirl them around and make candy sticks. You know, the, the sweet uh, peppermint sticks or cherry flavored sticks or whatever, you know, just different candy, candy flavored sticks that are swirly and different colors. And it really doesn't matter uh, how perfect or not they are. This is really just leftover. Just gently swirl them, gently stretch them, and you know, use up what you have left, and then you'll have a nice variety of different colored candy sticks left over. You can see these pieces of um, clay are, there's no rhyme or reason to them. They're just little chunks that had been left stuck together. So I'm just gonna make these little swirlies out of them. Easy peasy. So here are my marshmallow treats that I've made. These are uh, <laughs> an exact replica of ones that I saw at the checkout at Home Goods. So they're just intended to portray, you know, just marshmallows that have been twisted together and cut off into little marshmallow bites as a snack. And then here is what I'm going to be using as a pick in the tree. After this air dries, I'm going to insert a floral wire as far up the stem as I can, and then I'll just be able to uh, put that into the tree as a floral pick. And the same thing with this uh, big blue one, just a curly Q shape, just kind of whimsical. With leftover clay, I made a bunch of these uh, faux peppermint sticks or candy sticks. Um, you know, they're the kind that you buy at the five and dime in the old uh, gift shops and things. So I just used the leftover chunks of clay. This is intended to portray a roll up, but it kind of got out of whack because I didn't align the edges very well. So this one and this one is just using up leftover colors. I just made little lollipops. I'll stick a stick in there. Um, this, I'm hoping I'll be able to dry it, and then when it's dried, I'll be able to slice it, and it's a flower. So I'm hoping this is a cane that I can turn into flowers, and I'll slice them about a half inch thick and make little medallions of flowers. And likewise, I'm hoping that when I cut this one apart into chunks, it'll look like a heart on the inside. But maybe it will, maybe it won't. I don't know. Here are some faux ribbon candies. And then this is the last one. I used up the rest of my dough on this. And again, this will be a floral pick. I'll put some floral wire up in the center of that. And uh, I may end up Mod Podging them so that they're a little bit shiny and putting some glitter on them. I may not. I probably will. I don't know. Depends on how I feel about glitter by the time these are dry. Okay, so let's assemble these candies into some sticks. So I uh, let them all dry for a few days and then I cut them up into smaller chunks. You can see how well the flowers worked and those pinwheels worked well too. So I was really pleased and even the hearts turned out okay. So now I'm just separating them out. I'm trying to figure out how many to put on each stick and what order to put them in and are they all gonna be the same? I don't have enough to make them all the same. So I'm just spending a little bit of time here organizing them and getting them set out so that there are three treats per stick. Okay, now I'm taking a bamboo skewer. This is from the kitchen section of the dollar store, and I'm just pushing them on. Now, this dried clay uh, it is still soft, and it's really easy to stick these skewers onto there. Now, this one, I pushed those two too far down the stick, so I'm gonna pull those back up, and then just put this uh, last twisty one on the end, and that is a completed candy. No, I don't need that long of a stick, so I'm just going to use some cutters to cut the stick a little bit shorter. Now, I didn't, but you could definitely choose to use either white sticks in the first place or paint these sticks white after you're done. I just figured that's a step I don't need to take. This is just for me, and I don't mind them being that natural color. So I just went ahead and I made the rest of the bamboo skewers in the same fashion, 
And so I have three of each different variety. Now when I got down to the end, I had these little pieces that weren't wide enough to put onto the skewer. Uh, I had some leftovers at the ends of the, um, of the logs from cutting out the flowers and the hearts. I also had those pinwheel edges that had a good side and a bad side, and I'm just trying to play around with them to see what I'm gonna do with those. So I decided hot glue is the best idea. So I'm just using some hot glue to put them onto the sticks and this for these there will be a front and a back for the others either side could be the front but for these they'll definitely have a good side and a bad side now this one i put too far down the stick as well and it, the stick actually poked out the other side and then of course the glue was already dry so i couldn't move it so i had to cut the top of that stick off so that it wouldn't poke out the end but there you go so that's good so this is how I used up the ends of all the logs and all the casts off of all the, the cutting edges of everything that I had done. Waste not, want not, right? There you go. Those look really cute, I think. And now the picks. They are not going to be able to stay in the tree unless I put some wire on them. So I'm taking some 16 gauge craft wire that already came in 24 inch lengths, which are probably too long. Actually, they may have only been 18 inches long. And I'm just poking that down the center of each of these picks. And I don't need all that wire, so I'm just gonna cut that off as well. And so that was really easy. Uh, I just took my time and, and was careful to make sure that it didn't poke out the side. Now I'm putting some hot glue on the uh, wire at the bottom where the the wire goes into the clay and that'll hold it in place and not let it come out. Now for this one with the twists in it, I did have a couple of gaps so I just used some hot glue to close those up and nobody's any the wiser. For this double one, I ended up wiring the side chute into the main chute. So I put the wire into the main cane there, and then I bent it at the angle that I wanted this um, the side chute to come off. And then I wired the side chute onto there and fixed it up with hot glue to hold it firm. And that worked out really well. That's really sturdy. And then I just need a wire in the main body of that cane as well. And of course, what is a Christmas craft without glitter? So I'm using this Glitter Blast from Krylon to put some a first layer of glitter on there, but really it wasn't very noticeable. So then I used some fine glitter, ultra fine, uh, from the craft store. Um, this is a white with some iridescence to it, but it's a pretty fine grain on it. And I did the same thing on all of these. Just spray them with the Glitter Blast and then shake some glitter on there and they turned out like little frosted treats. Very cute. Again, you could paint the sticks if you care about that. You could also embellish them with bows or wrap them in cellophane or whatever you want, but I thought they were just perfect for putting onto the tree as is. I really like the way these came out. In fact, I might make a few more just because they're so adorable. So that's it. Thanks so much for joining me today. Um, and hey, I'm so sorry that I didn't show you how to put the chocolate and the pink on these marshmallows, but if you watch my donut video that's coming up, you'll see how to do it. It's the same method. So I hope you enjoyed watching these marshmallow treats being made today, and I hope you'll let me know if you decide to make some. Have a wonderful Merry Christmas, friends.